favorites video today, but I feel like I am 12 years old again and it's great. Let's get into it here. Um, okay, books. Starting off in early winter, I started getting into Greek philosophy, um, primarily the Symposium by Plato, which is a book all about the philosophy of love. I guess it's true, it's a true account of a symposium that occurred um, in ancient Greece where Socrates and some other elites in town um, got together to hang out and ended up just each giving a speech on what they believe love is. It basically pissed me off the entire time, but regardless of what you believe while reading it, it's just such an entertaining read. I actually wanted to scream the entirety of which I was reading it. I loaned it, but I wanna see if I can get, um, get the copy so I can show you all the annotations I made in that book because it was just, I highly recommend it, especially if you follow it by Ovid's The Heroides, which is mentioned in the symposium. If you're a folklore fan, okay, Taylor Swift folklore, and if you aren't, what are you doing? Um, you are going to absolutely adore this collection of poetry. Characters in Greek mythology, for example, Paris and Helen, what this is, it's poems that are letters they wrote to one another while the story was taking place. So like folklore with the love triangle, James, Betty, and Augustine, right? It's like that, except it's Greek mythological characters and it was written by Ovid back in ancient Greece. It's so cool. You have Paris writing a letter to Helen, basically telling her to ditch her husband and come with him and Helen being like, are you stupid? That's gonna start a war, but like also you're kind of hot. And 80% of it is women just like sitting on the rocks, looking out to sea, wondering where the guy they gave everything to went. It's so freaking awesome. I highly recommend this so hard, especially if you read it after the symposium or within the scope of one another. You're gonna feel like you're on such a, such a vibe. I joined a book club after reading those two and um, our first book was Wuthering Heights, which is such a good winter, novel. I'm actually not finished with it yet. The reason I'm not finished is not at all due to the fact that it's not incredibly entertaining. It's simply because the book club finished before me. Nonetheless, I'm say reading this one and falling behind on the next one because it is super entertaining and um, it's just, it, it's just a, it's a twin flame journey, this book. The twin flame journey except neither of them ever learn. Once you get into it, it's not as daunting as it is in the first chapter, so don't be afraid, just keep going. And those are my book recommendations. The winter, for winter. Book recommendations for winter. We're going on to music. I have high frequency hearing loss. Also, they're just like, my ears are just kind of, I don't know, they don't fit in AirPods or or, head, or ear, earbuds or anything like that, so I highly recommend these because not only do they not hurt your ears they're also super sexy so the charge part is a problem and sometimes i just don't charge them i'm happy with the purchase i just am a little lazy girl um these are the musics <laughs> i've gotten crazy into scores like film scores tv scores um primarily Coraline. i love the Coraline score and also the Lady Bird score uh, by John Bryan, I believe. Coraline is by Bruno Calais did Coraline. Also the Princess Diaries score is incredible and the Secret Garden score. The Secret Garden is my favorite book or it's like tied to my favorite book and the film has a beautiful score. I wouldn't really say it's winter. It shouldn't be winter, but it works. Also, this was especially apparent in autumn, but it still goes on, is the Over the Garden Wall score is insane. The Blasting Company made all of those songs, and I've also ventured off to listen to just The Blasting Company on their own, and I love them, and I've gotten into a bunch of artists that are in their same genre. Loved all that. I think I'll make a playlist of my top favorite winter songs that can connect to the city of so. 
um, rather than searching all these people individually, you can go on that playlist and also check out all my other playlists because I love making playlists. Um, so maybe I'll do that. I've also been listening to the Ink Spots, just oldies in general. A lot of it. I've been really enjoying it, especially when I'm cleaning or cooking. Ink Spots isn't actually that old, but like Frank Sinatra, for example, or The Temptations, um, Ella Fitzgerald kind of vibed. And most recently, because of Timothy, I've been listening to Radiohead and Pink Floyd a bit more. I've always liked Radiohead. It's not like I was introduced to Radiohead, but it reminds me of, you know, whatever. Okay, I had to take a little caca, but I'm back. When I was taking the caca, I made the playlist, so we can, we can look at that. It has ones I described and some more of what I've genuinely been listening to. 50 songs. The Last Mimsy. It was one of my favorite childhood movies. It, it, it just gets better every year. This is my um, main one, I would say. This is a jelly cat. I got her after losing another jelly cat that was gray. I was devastated I lost him in Disney World, but then I bought her a couple months later, um, and I love her. I always have to have a bunny because of The Last Mimsy. If you haven't seen that movie, go watch it. It's about kids who discover kind of alien-like technology, and it awakens special powers in them, especially in the little girl who has long brown hair, and I love it. We watched some Twilight. We watched some Twilight and <laughs> I love it. I used to despise it as a kid, but growing up, I now understand the aesthetic and I love it and I feel it. I feel the intensity genuinely, but at the same time, it is so ridiculous. It also nerve. 2016, I went to school for screenwriting and film and i will stand by this that nerve is a flawless screenplay it follows every single rule to the best of that rule's ability now i'm not saying it's like the best film of all time just because i think the best films of all time do break those rules in just the right way but nerve follows them it follows them so well and no matter how many times i watch it i'm on the edge of my seat i've never had a more f fun time in a fun and games sequence of a film ever it is such a good movie and we watched it recently and i fell in love all over again so nerve some crystals i've been really enjoying recently i've been getting more into crystals um because timothy is extremely into crystals and he bought me a rotocrosite for christmas it's so extremely powerful when i first put it on I felt extreme peace that day, and when I took it off, I had all of this chest pain. That's the heart chakra crystal. To the point where I couldn't wear it for a couple days because I was afraid of it. Finally, one day, I just wore it for a couple days, and, and I started feeling off, and I couldn't understand why um, until it occurred to me, oh my gosh, the rotocross height. Um, so I took it off, and I started feeling better. Um, which does not mean that the crystal is bad. It actually means that the crystal is extremely powerful, and it's doing something for me, but... Um, I can only take so much of it at a time. And that's where my other favorite crystal comes into play. It's black tektite. I love this crystal. It's coming from a meteor. It's black, kind of rough on the outside, but it can also come out as smooth. It can be made smooth and then it's like a shiny black crystal. And what it does is sucks all the negative energy into itself from you, like a vacuum. And I think it transmutes it into power, either for itself or it turns it into something good. I'm not really sure what it does with it. It's something along those lines, but all I know is it gets rid of any pain, especially headaches. Like I just put it here and it just, it, you can feel it sucking it up. It's <laughs> really crazy, it's incredible. Next, I'm gonna run through a list of my favorite things, starting with this journal. 
I have a very free-flowing schedule. Well, I'm a writer, screenwriter, and an actress, so it's really up to me to define what my daily schedule is. That comes with a lot of freedom that I can definitely abuse, and my therapist recommended a planner, and I was like, yeah, like, I, got a I know what a planner is, you know, I've had a planner. But what I like about this one is that I can just create my own format of a planner on here. Today I just did, for the first time actually, my weekly, like they, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and there's like a thicker black line there. And then on a, just a regular day, since it has the amount of hours in a day, I can do like this and I can block it out with a highlighter. I just got more aesthetic highlighters, so I'm pretty stoked about that, but I can, I can actually plan out the full day, which is something that a lot of planners that are set don't have. I just like how this creates more freedom. Like I could also put my favorites list on here and, and that's nice. A lot of my clothes is in Atlanta still. So I've been running through the same outfit or like variations of the same outfit over and over again. And it's always consisting of a super loose, low-waisted, flowy maxi skirt. I have a couple that I circle through. And then like I've been wearing a couple vests. Like right now there's like a blouse over a long sleeve black top. And the shoes I wear literally every day, unless I'm going out or it's a special occasion, are my platform Doc Martens. They're leather, they don't go above the ankle. I'll show a picture. They're so sweet and I love them and I always wear them with like socks. Don't look at my legs, they're not shaved. Okay. Um, some other products that I love. Rose water. I'm always a huge fan of rose water. This one is actually just rose water in general that I got at a crystal store. It doesn't smell quite like the ones you might buy that are sold in beauty companies. It has a little bit of a muskiness to it. It's not for the skin, so definitely be cautious. Um, but it should be fine if it's just rose water. I've been pairing this with something I love to do that I learned from Bella Hadid, putting your face in a bucket of ice in the morning. This is such a game changer. Like it's so nice. It feels so good. It alleviates anxiety, first of all. It makes you feel put together, second of all. And third of all, it has an immediate effect. Like, from one second to the next, all my puffiness just goes away. And then after I do that, I'll put on the rose water and use a like roller. I don't do it every day because in order to get ice, I gotta go downstairs to the basement. It's a lot of work. When it comes to makeup, love the Rose Ink Company for a while now. The foundation specifically is absolutely insane. And I've been doing the concealer first and then the brush afterwards um, process. and. Not only is it a million times easier, because like I said, I'm a little bit lazy, I'm a little bit lazy. Not only is it a lot easier, but it's a lot more lightweight. And something about the little balls and I don't know, dude, it just, I feel like I'm glowing after it. So that's what I do. Oh, oh, Jehovah oil on my hair. I use it as a makeup remover before I wash my face. And I'll also bathe my hair in it right before I wash my hair. It's a really good routine, so, yeah. The rest is just things. I'm a big fan of glass water bottles. I'm a little bit paranoid to drink out of plastic. So we really should not be using plastic this much in our consumption. And also the glass is just nicer. Another thing I've been loving is chrome nails. This one literally just broke about an hour ago and it's definitely time for a redo, as you can see. Another thing I've been really into and i've always really liked this but i've had a problem with it simultaneously because i don't like seeing you know um the bodies of innocent creatures used as decoration but when we were in arizona at the gem show there were a couple stands with the insects that were framed and i was really torn because aesthetically i love it but i had heard that certain companies were inhumane with how they achieved those, they, they retrieved those insects. So I asked at the front, a small company, a small run, and they said, no, it was super humane that they just would wait until the lifespan naturally ended and then they would frame that insect. And I see that as something along the more, like more along the lines of beautiful because 
you know, that insect is being honored. This one I got at, I got them all in Arizona, but this was the first one that I just was like freaking out over. It's um, a pink stick bug. This was a gift from Timothy for Valentine's Day. It looks so beautiful with the stick bug, but it's a meadow wanderer butterfly. This is a real spider web. How freaking cool is that? They spray painted it silver and then they just capture it in the frame. I'm just in awe of it. I love spiders, the essence of a spider, so. I just think they're beautiful and elegant um, and misunderstood. Look how remarkable they are, they make that. Happy to honor its work. Okay, one other hobby I went, I've been into um, recently is collecting dried flower petals. I've really enjoyed for the past few seasons pressing flower petals and I still do, but this is a nice way to solve the issue of again me being too lazy to press the flower petals and then drying too soon and me wanting to keep pieces of the bouquet. These specific petals are from a bouquet that was significant to me, that is significant to me. It's a good way to hold a piece of a memory. I highly recommend this and also pressing the petals but again that's something I've been doing for a while. This is this is a new development, new hobby. The other thing is um, an artist I've been really into recently. It's Leonora Carrington. I absolutely love her paintings. And for Valentine's Day, Timothy got me a book of her work. There's just something very ethereal and delicate about her work. I feel like when I look at it, I'm hearing the soundtrack to Coraline. Leonora Carrington. Then just some incredibly random things I've been really into recently. Um, swans, specifically black swans, black and white swans, both. Peacocks, pillows. I've been starting to feel like if I were an instrument, I would be this one. Like, whether or not I become the best cello player in the world, you can bet I still have a connection to this instrument. And it's, I'm just not realizing that. So, thank you for watching. I hope you maybe get into some of these things and um, I'll keep discovering stuff. I can show you. You say more, right?